Hello to whoever is watching, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be trying out that TikTok trend of drawing you and your significant other in um, a Studio Ghibli scene. So the scene that I chose is from Howl's Moving Castle and I actually had a couple other pictures, one from Ponyo and um, I don't remember where the other one was from but I landed on this one because it was simple and cute and it really captured the I um like the idea of romance that I was going for um and that classic studio ghibli blue sky moment area um so this is me and my boyfriend his name is Michael he's pretty awesome and so a lot of people who have been doing this trend I've noticed have kept like their same clothes and um, style uh, so they don't wear the clothes that the characters are wearing so that's what I did here so my boyfriend um honestly wears typically like a button-down shirt with like a jacket and khakis um, and I wear everything under the sun but my favorite outfit is this cute little red floral dress that I have um, and I love these hats that the girl's wearing in the picture, so <laughs> I put it on me anyway because even though I don't have one and tend not to look good in them, I still wanted to include it because, I don't know, they're really cute. Um, so, so anyway, his, like, my favorite color shirt on him is red. And so I did that. His usual jacket is gray. Um, I did the same colors as the picture, as you'll see later. I switched them up a little bit, but um, so I kept my dress that salmon pink of the jacket in the um, reference picture. So as we continue, I noticed some difficulties in the sketching process and a few of the main ones were that, as you can see on the coat in the reference picture, there are there's a pattern, and there's not really a pattern in my boyfriend's jacket, so I didn't have, and I also didn't have um, a good reference of his jacket, so I was just doing a plain gray. So it's just a big space where there's like nothing really there, and I was kind of worried about that, but it turned out okay in the end, I think. Um, and the second one was his hair because he has an, a like short curly hair and I was really going for the Studio Ghibli style as you can see with the face shape, the eye shapes, this is definitely not what I usually do. And so when I draw his hair, I usually draw it curly because that's how it is in real life, but I couldn't find any Studio Ghibli characters with curly hair that was like the same texture as his. So I went with like a little swoop in the back with um, short hair because he does have it like a little bit longer in the front and a little bit shorter on the sides in the back. So I was hoping that I would capture the same feel and I think I did all right. Um, the hard part about Studio Ghibli uh, in general is that it's so simple but it looks very good and I don't <laughs> make simple things look very good um, as you can see here I'm struggling with the hair at the moment I'm really really trying but it's not working and I didn't let go of that curly hair um, thing until like the very end of my inking in his hair because I was really trying to keep it accurate to real life but I ended up just leaving it the way it was because no matter what I did it just looks stupid so we're just gonna keep it that way and I managed to get like a little swoopy in there I don't know it's all right so his shirt was interesting because at this point I don't remember what it looks like so I was just kind of winging it. Um, so I did remember that it had buttons and a collar, but I'm not exactly sure how that all went together. I'm not a fashion designer or anything. So you can see here, like I'm struggling with how to draw the lines around it and stuff and it's difficult. 
I think um, I'm kind of unhappy with his shirt. I think I should have put in a little bit more detail in the line art. And I guess I can still change that, but I'm happy with what it's like right now, so I'm not really interested in changing it, especially since I have the final piece out now, and it's it's very good, I think. Um, at this point, I forgot my eyelashes, but I do add them back later, and there are a lot of things that I forget that I do add later when I come back and um, change things up. I'm not really one of those artists that... Um, continuously does everything in steps. I am honestly the type of artist that will do, will do like a little bit over here and a little bit over there and then get distracted and go back to the line art and then get distracted again and fill in a color spot that I had missed or whatever. Um, I have to say that I don't think my hair is actually accurate. Um, in this picture, but it worked with the Ghibli style. I have long hair. It's brown. It's messy, <laughs> but I don't, I'm not really sure how my bangs work, and whenever I try and figure them out in, like, a self-portrait type situation, it, it just doesn't work. I, even in my, like, title screen, the, the that picture is not accurate. <laughs> um, and this was really difficult. I always have problems with glasses. For some reason, they never look good when I do them. <laughs> the perspective is always off. There's something wrong with the curvature of the like of the um, the frame, and it just doesn't look good. But I was happy that I was doing Studio Ghibli for this one because I didn't have to put in like a lot of detail into the glasses. I could just keep it normal, and I wasn't sure if they actually do this in the movies because I don't really pay that much attention, but I know in anime a lot, they um, keep their eyebrows and, and eyes or whatever, and hair, when it's overlapping, they keep the line art there. So I was trying to do that because um, in a lot of anime, you have like hair over your um, eyebrow, and it doesn't really look normal to have the eyebrow covered up so you outline it anyway and just have the eyebrow over the hair which doesn't really make sense in practice but like in cartoon it makes more sense than um, to give them expression than it would to not include the eyebrow and put it under the hair so <laughs> i have an enormous an, an obnoxiously large head so this hat is not looking too good. It looks small right now, but I promise it will look better at the end, I hope. Um, and I was actually really happy with the line art stage in this. Um, I used a technical pen, I think that's what it's called, and I didn't change the line weight at all. Again, I was trying to keep that simple, cute little Ghibli style. And it it actually turned out really well, and I think that a lot of people struggle with line art in a sense that um, they can't get the... It, it looks wobbly and stuff, but I really tried to come back and fix my line art every at every point. I tried to keep it as smooth as possible, and if there was like a bend in it that I wasn't happy with, I would erase that certain section and come back to it. Um, it's difficult because it takes a lot of time and effort and I am I have zero patience but it was actually really relaxing to just sit and try and draw all this because I wasn't used to doing stuff with drawing that's really relaxing I'm used to sketching it out having it be relaxing and then when I get to the coloring and the line art stage it just gets really hectic and, and stressful but this was very, very zen, very nice and calm, um, and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, but I think that the reason why it turned out so good is because I was careful with the line art, because um, usually I do really quick, thick, not paying attention line art. Um, again, I don't have that much of a patience, so it's not easy to 
sit there and do all the little details that I draw in on my sketch. So honestly, a lot of the time, the line art, line art comes out simpler than the sketch because I'm just too um, impatient. But in this case, um, I think the sketch was more of what it's supposed to be as a guideline, and I was really happy with the um, uh, line art as a detailing effect because I did a lot of general shapes and stuff, but I detailed with the line art. And I usually don't do that. I usually, again, simplify my work. So adding on more detail, I think, helped a lot. And um, I forgot he was wearing a jacket here, so I had to quickly add some sleeves because I didn't add them in my sketch because I was like, well, no, he doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't need sleeves. I mean, like, he's wearing a short sleeve shirt. But I'm an idiot and completely forgot that his jacket is not short-sleeved, so whatever. <laughs> but I wasn't actually going to originally do a jacket because, you know, he doesn't wear it all the time. It's summer, duh. But, um, oh, and that's his little chain, his little white boy chain, whatever. But <laughs> um, I don't actually see him wear it that often except in the winter but I thought it would work with the piece more cohesively because it creates movement with the wind and stuff like that and as you can see it's it turns out pretty good I liked it I'll, I'll add more detail later and change things up but I'm really really happy with it and I think because I didn't worry about the line weight and um, making it thicker and on the edges and thinner, um, like in the middle of the line, if that makes sense. You do that a lot to create depth, but with this, they have the cell shading, they have the very simple line work, so you can easily see what's going on, and it looks of, very much gives me like um, coloring book vibes, if you know what I'm talking about, I don't know. And here I'm using actually a technique that I saw on TikTok where you um, use the little uh, selection tool thing and you select the area that you want to color in and it makes it easier to um, just drop in your colors. And I was like, why don't you just outline it with your pen? Because that would make sense to me. But it turns out whenever you do that, you can see a bit of the outline and then you have to come back in and like blend the outer part to the inner part. And it's just more difficult. So I think I have a lighter skin tone than my boyfriend. At least in the summer, he gets tan pretty easily and I don't go outside. So... <laughs> I used Howl's skin tone, I believe that's Howl anyway, for me and um, the girl's skin tone for Michael because, I don't know, I thought it would be easier to use their skin tones to match the, the Studio Ghibli vibe and because they had different skin tones I also thought it would be um, cohesive to each other and to real life. I'm not sure if it worked out because I honestly think that it's a little bit different, like the colors are different, but I still tried to match everything. So my I have dark hair, like I said, and so I use this shadow color um, that they use in her hair. And as you can see, there's this like line thing that I told you about with the, um, if you outline it and then fill it in. Um, but I use the shadow color and I'll come back in later with the highlights on a different layer. So my layers go sketch layer, line art layer, color layer for me, and then color layer for Michael, and then the shading slash highlight layer for both me and Michael because um, there's not a lot of colors that are touching so it's easier to keep it on the same level layer. Excuse me. And this was difficult because, um, not this part specifically, but the hair was difficult because for lining and for coloring, I'm not that much of a light person. Like when you shine a light on an object, I'm like, is the light coming from the left? And it's not, it's coming from the right. But um, I think I did a pretty good job 
here because it was simple and you break down the shapes a lot more easily especially with the help of the shading in the reference picture because as you can see the lights coming from straight on and um, then you can see exactly where the shadows lie so that when you're doing your own drawing you can copy those shadows in a very similar way and I also um, so again I keep dropping in the um, eye dropping the uh, colors of the hat of the clothes of the, the skin um, I did not notice that that was there awkward but oh I guess I did but um, this ribbon I wanted to make the same color as Michael's shirt because I thought it would make more sense to um, just be more cohesive because for some reason like there is no color matching in there in the, the Ghibli picture but I wanted color matching in mine because I always do that in all of my characters like I take an accent color of the one character and make it a main color of another character and I think it's really cute and it I don't know gives them a little more like connection but it works with Ghibli, but it doesn't work with me, so... And I still wanted to add a little bit of my own, you know, personality into it, if that makes sense. But as we continue, I use the purple from her bow to fill in my glasses, because my glasses in real life are purple. They're kind of obnoxiously purple, but, you know, whatever. Um, and I use the light color of the light shading in her hair um, for my eyebrows and my eyes my eyes are like like a caramel plus poop brown color <laughs> and my boyfriend's eyes are a beautiful brown green um but I gave us both these kind of like poop brown eyes because it was simple and it matched the vibe so sorry about that i didn't represent him exactly correctly or me but you know whatever um for his hair i wasn't sure what i was going to use because you know the hair in the picture is blonde and he's not blonde he's like a sandy brown color and it's really cute but it's hard to match in real life so i used the shading color for his hair um, in the picture, in the reference picture, for Michael's hair. And then I just used a darker um, version of that for the shading. Um, that would be like the regular shading, I guess. I don't know. And I, I got confused on the skin color because <laughs> it looks so different in the picture. Maybe it's the blue background or something. But like it looks a lot more pink on him i think than in the color like it looks a little bit more yellow or like an orangey tone but like it's like pink here and i don't maybe i'm just like blind and i can't see color and it's pink in the normal color or it's yellow here but i'm you know not the best at color theory so i think i accidentally merged his sideburns with his ears there but I kind of ignored it and just went over it that's fine his eyebrows aren't actually that dark but I like to make fun of them so yeah, woohoo <laughs> I was gonna color our lips but I saw that it wasn't colored in Ghibli so I thought it would be fine to leave it natural because I usually don't wear like lipsticks that often and if I do they rub off within like five minutes so you know whatever um, I think my skin tone is pretty much a match, but I'm not sure about his. There's his little chain. <laughs> um, and I tried to match all the grays together and all of the, um, like the tones. So they're like warm and cool tones. So I tried to make all of the, um, colors cool that I mixed up cool tones because if you notice... Um, the red is a little bit more purpley and muted, and the pink is a little bit more purpley, and the, the, the chain, the grays, are a little bit more blue. And I wanted to keep them on the same spectrum because, like in the Ghibli um, p 
picture, that's how you create cohesiveness because if you have different colors from different color families all over the place, it's gonna look like you're trying to make a clown and not an actual character. But, you know. Moving on, his was actually more difficult than mine because mine was just a dress, you know, just a top and maybe like a hat. But his was a lot of folds and stuff and I have the irresistible urge to constantly make my folds super shaded and super well done but this time I had to step back and be like no Rachel you just have to put the dark gray in the shadow area and then the normal gray in the uh, other area and his jacket is a darker gray so again I took um, different spots and I had to mix up a darker shadow color and for variety because I didn't want the whole jacket to be the same color I did add um, some light, lighter areas to the cuffs of the sleeves and the hood because they're, I don't know if they're actually that color in real life, but I didn't want everything to just be the same gray. And in this area, it's a really good example of my like idiocy when it comes to this because I'm really lazy and I don't fill in all the colors and then I come back and I get really upset that they're all not filled in and so I come back and fill everything in and and just change everything up I'm like it'll be fine if it's a little bit outside the lines but no I don't feel that way in actuality so in this part I was beginning to work on the background which it turns out is a nice little blue here I think I should have done a gradient but maybe not it works out in the end, I think, but I think if I used a slightly lighter blue, it would have been nice. So the cloud brush, actually, in, um, what is it called? Procreate, <laughs> is, like, a lot more fluffy than these clouds. So I used the cotton brush and, um, just did a little bit of cool grays and whites, um, a little bit of off-white, and I just tried to fill in some more things and as you can see I thought that the corner was feeling a little bit empty so I did change that and as we continue here I'm just cleaning up all of the areas and adding shading so in some areas you can see that like the areas that I didn't color are enough blue which is awkward I probably should have just erased the background where they where the characters are because if I did that I wouldn't have had to come back and change everything to you know color up the blue but you know I'm stupid so <laughs> uh, this uh, is the same shading color as in the picture and I was <laughs> having some difficulties here because again I'm not good at shading so I would shade it the way that I think it would be shaded and then I would look back at the picture realize I was completely off and have to change the whole um thing and you don't really see that much here because it's like sped up but it happens a lot <laughs> and it was nice to do cell shading for once because it's nice to break down everything so to simple things as you can see there's dark on one side and light on the other so when you're shading um, in like like complex shading it's harder to differentiate where every different spot is because different things cast shadows depending on where they are and it's difficult and as you can see here um, I was actually trying to going back to my normal shading rituals of shading everything in like real nice before I um, then like blend everything out but I told myself no I have to do really simple shading so I got rid of a lot of the stuff I still kept some extra shading in there because I wasn't comfortable with leaving it just plain I don't know it gives me anxiety but whatever so this process of shading was actually my favorite part because as it just like brings the whole thing together. It makes it a lot nicer and cuter. I love it. I don't know. But 
So again, I used the shading color that they used in the picture for the hair hat. Hello, hat. Um, and I was, it's basically the same shading for the hat, so it wasn't too difficult, but the hair was difficult because as you can see, she has a braid. I don't have a braid. I, I put in long hair because I have long hair and I never wear it in anything else because I'm incompetent with hair. So um, I was trying to figure out how this would work and I was thinking, well, the hat shades the face and the hair, so only a certain part would be lit up and so I decided that that would be the the front part and I was kind of messy here I cleaned it up a little bit but uh, meh um I tried to lighten that area up near his chin that um that area with the light brown uh, by going softer not really going opaque but it didn't really fit the Studio Ghibli vibe of the rest of the picture, so I changed that later. And like, same there, it's, it doesn't work with like transparency that you usually do in different art. Transparency is a really fun tool to use, but not in this specific type of art. And it was frustrating, but it was, it was nice and fun because I could just sit there and not have to worry about that because that is the main stressor of all my problems but um in in art uh for some reason i could not figure out this part of the shading in particular because as you can see the guy has long hair and my dear does not have long hair so it's harder because his hair doesn't cast shadows like the other guy's hair does because it's short um so I wanted to build depth in the face with this sort of a thing and I wasn't happy with his hairline because it just it made his head look really big so I added instead some shading around the face so that it would and then extended his hairline you can't see, but I'm like making hand motions to try and explain all of this. But um, it turned out okay in the end. And here's where I think I should have added more wrinkles in that lower area of the shirt, of the red shirt. It looks a little plain and boring to me, but it's still really cute. I don't know. I'm just not happy with it. Maybe I should go back and fix it. Hmm. I don't know. So as you can see here really well with the um, dark gray, it's like a blue. It's like a really nice navy blue, but it still looks like muted and gray toned. And that's what I was really going for um, in this sort of, I don't know, area. It, it's, when you shade normally, the lighter areas are more warm and the darker areas are more cool in general. But in this, case I wanted to like exacerbate that difference because the, co the colors are cool anyway um, so it's harder to make the the light parts warm because even the skin tone even though it's like a yellowy warm shade it's still on the cooler toned side so I don't know if that makes sense but again color theory is not my strong suit uh, so here again I'm just cleaning everything up cleaning 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 that chin was really bothering me for the longest time but um, I fixed it is that a spot on my face did I miss that whatever it's too late now we've already finished it <laughs> once I sign things I have like this problem where I can't go back and fix things because I've signed it and therefore it's done and I can't fix it because then it the signing means nothing because it's it's a I don't know I'm stupid but whatever so I actually changed his sleeve if you notice there um, from the line art before I changed it in the line art but I wanted to draw attention to it because at the moment it was like the way that I do cuffs where it's like rounded out but the way that Ghibli does cuffs is really like thin and you can see this little like shaded area underneath the wrist and it's really cute here I was gonna put the sky there, but then I realized that if the jacket is going up, 
and that's not what it's going to look like. So I kind of just decided that that line there would be um, a, a wrinkle instead of like where the jacket cuts off. So I'm happier with that because also it creates a whole shape of the character. Like if there was a little bit of blue there, it wouldn't just be character. It would be a little bit of sky. And I don't know if that makes sense either, but you know, it's what I'm working with. <laughs> my limited intelligence but whatever I did shade in a little bit of the um, eyebrows because they did have line work in the eyebrows and I wasn't sure that I wanted to do that because it's not what I usually do so I did um, just do a little bit of shading and the hair was difficult here I thought that was gonna look like a claw but it didn't so woohoo <laughs> um, I was trying not to overshade with this and here is where I start to change the hairline after I change the eye of course because again the shapes in Ghibli are very very specific to the way that they are and if you don't draw each shape correctly it doesn't match the face because they have a very soft um, sort of sloped nose and soft lips that kind of blend into the chin area and that makes it difficult because when because it's not how humans look so when you're drawing your normal eyes or or whatever that goes with your style it doesn't work out because that's just not how um you know normal people look so here i was trying to do the same thing over and over again because i'm an idiot and i was stubborn and lazy but you know <laughs> I'm happy with this now because it looks like he has more depth and it looks like his head is less big. And here's the part where I add the, the light, the lighter shadows, and the, the, the shadows, the lighter highlights, and just try and make everything a little bit more um, distinctive. Um, and that's about it. It's getting close to being finished and I hope you like the end result. Um, if you did stick around, if you like my art, that's that's really awesome. I I have to admit that I haven't watched this movie, but I'm trying to because my friend got me into all the Ghibli movies and they're they're really cute and adorable. And here I'm just adding the extra details that I had missed, a little bit of line work in the eyebrows, a little bit of um, chain texturing in the neck, and that's about it. And now I'm just going to sign it, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed watching um, how I did this Studio Ghibli Significant Other Art Challenge, or whatever you call it, and I hope you have a great day. Bye!